Hi, my name is Sarah, and if you're new here, I make these videos for family and friends, usually to keep up with my health updates or medical history. But I have a few friends and family who have some medical phobias, and that's okay. I've had my own. So, all right, let's not always talk about medicine here. Or if we do, maybe we can talk about some mental health stuff. Well, anyway, aside from that, let's talk about spider silk today. And I promise it'll tie in by the end of the video to <laughs> something that concerns just overall well-being. So no heavy medical stuff. This, this one's just for you guys that would like to talk about something more positive in the world and spider silk is pretty amazing stuff so let me tell you a little bit about it first of all you should know that spider silk is the strongest substance that we know about like humankind doesn't know of anything stronger ounce for ounce spider silk is stronger than steel stronger than steel that's pretty cool so <laughs> there are some scientists studying this spider silk protein and they uh, <laughs> these scientists were charged with genetically engineering goats who produce female goats that produce uh, milk with spider silk proteins so that well it goes through a certain amount of treatments and can, they think they can make some type of Kevlar that's as light as cloth, but, you know, a strong, well, stronger than Kevlar. So, because it's stronger than steel, even. One strand of this stuff is just amazing. So, in Madagascar, there is this little spider that has science hopping. I mean, the military is just ah, for this little guy. This is called Darwin's bark spider. <laughs> bark spider, as in tree bark. So, because he blends. He's a little guy. Nobody's really sure exactly how he does it, but he manages, or she, <laughs> to just basically launch this anchor line for its web. That's the longest one I think that we know of from any spider. And it goes across rivers to the other side and it can build its webs across rivers. <laughs> so that anchor line is how, you know, it's what they build the rest of their web from. That's pretty impressive, right? Well, so this is this is the this little guy. He's got the strongest and stickiest of all webs known to you know of all the spiders, right? So this is the this is the stuff. This is <laughs> get your goats ready. <laughs> no, <laughs> your spider goats. <laughs> so, and you know. So the military wants it to, to make better than Kevlar shirts and pants and whatnot. Uh, but if we could figure out how to make enough of it, because if, if this spider was as big as a human, <laughs> it would just, just one thread could, could stop a Learjet in mid-flight. I kid you not, that's, that's how strong this stuff is. Could you imagine if we could harness that and use it for building and, and clothing and other materials? Plus, you know, it's a natural fiber. So, like, if we could somehow, I don't know, synthesize that without killing ourselves. I don't <laughs> anyway, so, you know, these threads can add up and... There are many kinds of spiders, not not just this this one guy. Uh, I just 
I think he's pretty impressive. You know, medical science is even studying the spider's silk. They want it for uh, sutures, obviously. Skin grafts, because it's soft and it adheres naturally. And it's made of the similar kind of proteins like scar tissue, right? Scar tissue is kind of like, uh, it covers up the vulnerable spots. It's this protein that grows back skin stronger, harder than before. That's, that's your human Kevlar, scar tissue. Isn't that kind of cool? I mean, it's not the same as a spider web coming out your butt, but it's something. Uh, scar tissue is pretty cool protein, and that's part of your immune system, right? I like to talk about that a lot, but not enough about how good your body is at healing itself. When something like that happens, a cut or a scrape, and once in a while there's a scar left behind, and I want you to think about that as kind of your nature's Kevlar that your own cells produce. Uh, ounce for ounce, your bones are stronger than steel, too. You know, we're not putting that in goat milk, but <laughs> we have some pretty remarkable healing abilities, just as humans and spiders, webs, if, if we can somehow harness that protein. That could do a lot, of course. Webs like scarring can get a little out of hand. <laughs> uh, there's people who keep tarantulas. They're not really spiders, but they also make some pretty cool webs. And when they, you know, if they're burrow, if they're a burrowing species, you know, they clean out their well, it's more of a layer than a cage. <laughs> it really is like a monster's lair, if it, especially a burrowing spider. But when they clean out the substrate from the from the enclosure, I mean, the whole bottom comes out as one piece because a burrowing spider it just connects all, it uses its web to connect the whole thing. You know, it's it's really protected. It's really defended in there. You don't know what you're even reaching into at that point. Uh, some tarantula keepers like to film and, and upload to YouTube when it's time to clean the cage out with all the webs <laughs> so they can find their spider. <laughs> well, not spider. Taran well, spiders, tarantulas. Uh, I've, I've even seen a couple of videos of people who've taught their jumping spiders how to high five. So they're not completely brainless animals either. But then there are some species that are colonizers. They, they aren't going to live in a place by themselves. They want to live in a colony. And those colonies can get out of hand, like scar tissue or emotional scar tissue even. It can get to be too much, almost to the point where we don't know what we're looking at anymore. And for that, sometimes we need to clear it away before it sort of chokes off everything else. So pay attention to your emotional baggage and how much you've allowed yourself to get covered in this webbing. It might keep you safe and be your armor, but it might also hide who you are. So just some food for thought on kind of a vibe of trying to stay mentally healthy and well. I can also tie a lot of this to the proteins that have created, you know, other medical issues. And maybe in the future, I can reference this video for that. So but in the meantime, these webs, these cobwebs, these spider webs, they're connective tissue in nature. There are other animals, ants, moths, lots of different kinds of uh, worms that make silk, but not as strong as the spider. 
<laughs> so, anyway, here's some food for thought for the day, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. That's pretty much all I really wanted to talk about for now. But if you have any comments or questions, if you want to add to this conversation, please feel free to do so below in the comments. And if you want more of my content, I would love it if you'd subscribe. Thanks for listening. Be kind to yourself and others today. Bye.